Did you know that if you ask three different AI tools to tell you a joke about coffee, you will get the same exact punchline from all three of them? It's actually oddly creepy when you try it for yourself. But back in 2025, Stanford researchers found a seven-word phrase that you can add to your prompts that force the AI models to get more creative. And I've got to admit, I've been abusing the shit out of it because it's actually really awesome if you are a power user of AI tools. So in this video, I want to show you how to do it yourself because it's actually really easy and simple to do. So if you're new to the channel, my name's Sean. I've been in tech and startups for about a decade, scaled my own business to seven figures and launched a SaaS product to 20K a month. And this channel is all about helping people start, scale, or optimize businesses using AI tools, automation, and tech. So if that describes you, welcome. And if it doesn't describe you, we'll get the f out of here. <laughs> Just kidding. JK. So my goal for this video is that it will help you build better stuff and stand out from the crowd. So we'll start off this video with a little bit of theory crafting so that you actually understand the context of why the prompt works. Then we're going to look at the actual prompt and then we're going to apply it to a few real world examples. So make sure you stick around to the end because you'll get to see how I use this in a real world application that I am building. So let's get the ball rolling and talk about the reason why this prompt actually works. So the way that these AIs come to be in all of our hands is obviously a very complex thing. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know all of the different things that go on under the hood. But one of the things that does happen is that after a model has gone through and been trained, it needs to go through a process called alignment. So it needs to be aligned, which, yes, sounds like a phrase out of a dystopian movie, but that is besides the point. But what this aligning actually does is it makes the outputs of the model less diverse. What that means is the outputs tend to be a lot safer and more predictable. This is why when we asked three different models the same exact tell me a coffee joke line, we got the same safe, predictable punchline out of all of them. Now, according to this paper, this effect that happens is known as mode collapse, which isn't really important that you know the name of that unless you want to sound really smart and go repeat it to other people. But the point of all of this is the people that are helping to create the models that go through this alignment process can actually inject their own biases into the alignment. And one of those biases is familiarity which basically means we like things better that we already know. It is a documented cognitive bias. It's used a lot in marketing. It is a way that human beings shortcut decision-making. So let me give you two quick examples that are a little bit more realistic than the coffee joke scenario. One question I get asked a lot is how to build UI that is not super boring. So imagine you're vibe coding an app and you want to build in a new feature and you're asking a tool like Claude to help brainstorm through the best ways to present that UX to the user. Well, all it's going to do is give you the base average of all of the UX brainstorming that it's ever seen. And so these responses are always going to be safe things that it's probably seen before. So example number two, let's say that you're working inside of a company and your boss is asking you for innovative ways to integrate AI into whatever your business is and you're using the AI to actually brainstorm that. Well, what you're going to get out the other side is all the boring stuff, automating email follow-ups, lead scoring, transcribing meetings. Again, all things that are like kind of correct, but these are just the coffee punchline, right? These are the same exact thing as that coffee punchline. It is not very creative. It's giving you safe answers. So here's how we can get around this. So there's actually two versions of this prompt. We'll look at the seven word simple version first. Generate five responses with their corresponding probabilities. So if we were to now go and look back at Claude, for example, and we ask it the same question, tell me a joke about coffee, generate five responses with their corresponding probabilities, we get vastly different jokes, right? So we still have this high probability 
Why did it file a report? It got mugged. But then we have some options that are a little bit off the beaten path. What's the opposite of cough e? Sneezy. Think that's pretty funny. <laughs> I actually like that one. Why don't coffee beans ever get into arguments? Because they know how to espresso themselves properly. Ha <laughs> ha. And now if we go over to chat GPT, we can see that we are now getting, again, entirely different jokes that didn't even show up in the anthropic response. I told my coffee it was getting cold. It said better latte than never. Kind of funny. So now let's talk about why this actually works. If we were to imagine a graph for a second, let's say that we have a bell curve. And let's say that this bell curve, if we draw some lines down the middle, you're going to see how amazing I am at statistics in a second. Let's say that 80% of all of the responses we could ever receive from the language model are in this middle piece, right? So this is going to be our main 80%. And we could say that this is like the, the safe responses. Well, what we have on each side of this curve are going to be the other 10% of responses that are kind of zanier, right? We could think of these as more creative responses. So what we're telling it is that we basically want it to take its responses from these end pieces, right? The tails of this graph instead of from this safe, predictable middle zone where it normally gives us responses from. So if this middle option was our punchline that we got from all of them about being mugged, then this one on the end might be our sneezy joke, right? This is the sneezy joke. And then on this side, we're going to have a, a different response, which was maybe that, you know, it was late joke, the latte joke. So that's what this whole system is about, specifically telling the system not to pull responses from this safe, predictable middle zone and instead to pull them from these more unexpected edges, which are more creative responses. So like I said, I want to show you a real life example of where you would use something like this. So I have this app that I use here for myself to make thumbnails. You might recognize some of these from the channel. And this new feature that I just added in allows me to brainstorm concepts for a thumbnail. So for example, you can come in here and you can say what the concept of the video is. Let's use this video as an example that you are watching. It's a video about how Stanford researchers discover this phrase that improves the creativity of your outputs by 1.6 to 2.1 times. So now what it's going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to generate thumbnail concepts based on this specific entry. So we can see once this thing runs through, we have now five different unique concepts that would be the basis of this thumbnail, right? So we have the seven secret words, which would be a close-up of a person revealing some secret glowing thing. We have AI creativity unleashed. We have the Stanford secret prompt, the thoughtful researcher holding blah, 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 right? And so we have these five different, like somewhat vanilla, but still pretty good thumbnail concepts. And the meta level of this is that the prompt that gets used under the hood inside of the code base for this, I actually developed with this framework. And so what I did was I took all of the different data that I have about my channel and instructions on how to create high click-through rate thumbnails. And I told it to merge this all into a master prompt that I can use in this app. And I want you to generate five different responses with their corresponding probabilities. And so what I ended up getting out the other side was a bunch of different versions of this prompt that I tested. So I tested all five versions of these and saw which one actually gave me the best responses. So what ended up happening was that the most predictable one was going to be what? It was going to be the one that actually followed those guidelines closest to the T. But the one that ended up performing better was actually a little bit more middle of the road. So it had a lot of the rule sets baked in, but it gave a lot of creative freedom to how the prompts got generated. So we could now take this concept and we could extend it. Let's say that I want to have a separate mode in here where I can actually force it to be more creative in the output. And so what we can do is we can go back to this research paper and we can pull the longer version of the prompt, which is telling it to actually sample from the end tails of that distribution. So it's telling it a little bit more specifically to pull these 10% pieces off each side. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually copy this. We're going to pop down into our coding environment. And now I'm going to ask it to add in this capability. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go down into our coding environment here and we're going to tell it, I want you to add this simple checkbox 
into that concept generator. And when it gets selected, it toggles this thing called crazy mode and it goes and it generates these like longer tail variants of our stuff. And so we're going to let this thing run through and then we'll look at the final output. Okay, so that finished. And now we have this little toggle button that says go crazy. And we have it running here with a very similar prompt. And so we're going to see what these outputs look like side by side. All right, so let's look at it. So thumbnail concept one standard concept. So we added these little tokens here. Um, a person reacts with astonishment. Okay, I mean, a kind of basic kind of thing. A linguistic seed, a microscopic glowing seed radiates complex organic light patterns into a vast dark expanse. That's kind of cool. Um, cracked monolith, so a colossus featureless monolith representing an LLM is dramatically cracked by a glowing fissure, releasing vibrant, chaotic energy. Reverse gravity, a bewildered figure watches as shimmering, colorful thoughts float upwards, defying gravity from a seven-word glowing glyph. Shadow puppet architect. We're getting these very creative outputs. So typically when you run a prompt like this, by the way, just for context, you get like the same type of responses each time. One's a before and after split screen. One's me going, staring at the screen, going like this, right? It's always the same thing. And so this prompt, I mean, we're getting much different outputs based on having this little go crazy toggle. So again, this can be applied to almost any situation where you want creative problem solving. Now, there's obviously a ton of situations where you don't want that and you do want that middle 80% that's predictable and safe. But when we're doing things that are creative exercises, vibe coding certain things, UX design, UI inspiration, uh, design exercises, trying to brainstorm like business concepts, business ideas, ways to approach problems, those are all things that benefit from creative brainstorming. So again, anytime you're in one of these creative problem solving type of situations, this is a great thing to use because by default, models are going to give you safe answers. So that's it, guys. If you liked this video, I'm going to link, I think right here, hopefully it's on this side of me. If not, it's on that side, a video where we take this concept and do something very similar to use language models to brainstorm different hypotheses, hypotheses about how to solve problems. It's actually an incredible system that helps us avoid something called narrative lock which is basically where language models will lie to you because it sounds better than saying, I don't know. So check out that video if you are interested in this type of stuff. That is it for this video, though. I will see you in the next one.